that's so cool. Yeah. So oh, we, look at that. We're going through a especially bad time for kind of fit components in the supply chain. Is it real or is it fake? It's so hard to tell by just looking at the exterior of a phone. You really have to open it up to see for yourself. But these days, phones like this one have so much adhesive in them, for waterproofing, it makes it a real pain. So it turns out the big guys use x-ray machines for this, and I wanted to try it for myself. So today I've come to Creative Electron, they make industrial x-ray machines. So Jacob and Bill, thank you guys for having me. Thanks for coming here. I brought you a challenge. I have this Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus that I built in the markets in China wow. from parts. That's pretty and cool. we went to Best Buy and bought a brand new one. And I'd like to see if you can use your x-ray machine to tell the difference between them. I think what we'll do, we'll do some sort of blind, blind taste test. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll hide behind the machine and put in a, put in a phone and you tell me whether it's, whether it's the one I built or the one that Samsung built, we think. Sounds like an awesome plan. All right. Let's do it. All right. So what machine should, you've got machines everywhere here. <laughs> Which yeah. one should we use for this? Uh, we can start with this one here in the van. Okay. And then uh, we can check a few other machines. Let's see what we see here first. Okay. And then we can, and then uh, we can go uh, play. Let's yeah. do that. All right. I, I like that idea. Also, if you want to know how much I paid for the parts that went into this phone, stick around to the end of the video. So what we had talked about was we're just going to do a broad view image of these okay. all together. You guys are gonna have to close your eyes. I'm no, gonna okay. have to tell you which is which. I don't know which one is which. Okay. Left, right, right, left, left, right, right. Right. Okay. Choir image. So we're doing a six second picture. And then once it's done, it's gonna preview it up here. And then by having a longer duration, it allows for the heavier components to be more in detail. Okay. So oh, as wow. you can right. see here, I'm gonna go through and give a little bit more detail here. These are your details of your image. Okay. If you wanna zoom in. I see some differences already. Look at the cameras. Mm -hmm. so the you, cameras look different. So yeah, these are two it, camera modules. Yeah, I would assume that this is the one that you made. I assume this is the counterfeit mm -hmm. one. Why do you or think that? Or the brand new one. Uh, well, usually with a lot of the other units I've noticed, I've inspected several camera modules, Yeah, is they'll have several different optics. So this is going to have more of that zoom functionality that they have in that series. As for this one, it doesn't look like it's, it's missing an, optic, it's an optics control on it. And so that's where you see this little piece here. Yeah, and totally this piece do. here that goes under there is missing. Ah, I didn't even know that. It looks, sounds like I got a counterfeit camera module. It looks which like I didn't. It. I, no idea. <laughs> so no obvious wire rework or anything. No. This is like playing that game where they give you two pictures and you got to spot the ten differences between the two pictures. The batteries are pretty different too. Are they? I couldn't tell you which one's the genuine one. Batteries is a huge issue. We, I did a big video about about trying to figure out real versus fake batteries in the markets, mm -hmm. and you know uh, there are a lot of batteries with Apple logos on them that look good on the outside, and they you know the testers can change the serial number and the manufacturer information on the on the chips on the battery, so it, wow. it becomes a real issue of... So one of the things you guys were telling me is that maybe you can tell where there are missing screws. Yeah, you Wait, what screw there? Right there. Yeah. These, two. These two. Yeah. I thought I put all the screws in. <laughs> I'm particularly amazed by the, uh, by the changes in the camera. I mean, what we are hypothesizing here is that somebody is making counterfeit camera modules yeah. for a very modern flagship phone. A flagship phone that's what, in the last year, year and a half? That's pretty amazing. The camera works on this, right? It's not like it's a dummy, you know, it <laughs> yeah. works, it looks good. Yeah. Assembling it and turning it on, I, I didn't see anything fishy about the camera. And I guess the other thing that I'll say is like, looking at the camera module, it's not obvious that it's any, I, I don't, you know, yeah. I've not looked at a lot of genuine camera modules, so maybe I could tell if I looked at it up close, but as far as I knew, all of the parts that I bought were used parts, right? So we're, we're, we're OEM parts. I thought we were just gonna find things like, oh, I missed a screw or I missed a, a bracket or something. Um, and we did find that, to be fair. But, but I'm quite surprised to learn that some of these parts are not as, not as genuine or at least not the same as what's currently being sold as, as I thought they were. Let's show you guys what the, which phone is which. All right, I think we one. pretty well know. Oh. But yeah, the, indeed, you guys were right. The, the phone on the left was the one that we bought this morning at Best Buy, and the, the phone on the right was the one that I made. Um, so yeah, I'm I am impressed at how much <laughs> deep. 
you know, not only could you tell the difference, but how many little details could we find that were that were indeed different? Yeah. Well, let's go see some of the other cool stuff that you guys can do with these machines. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Awesome. Sweet. Who's using this? Or you don't have to tell me who, but for what? It's, it's a remanufacturer of phones. So if you go and, and uh, even the machines that you go to the mall, and then they buy the phone for you. So there's like a few companies that do it now. Okay. Yeah. But yep. It, it goes to like a few different companies around the world. Yeah. And they take it apart, they put a new screen, and they just put it back together, and they uh, uh, send it back to like whatever yeah. price an AT and T, whoever it is. Right. And then you go and as like a refurbished phone. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So these are examples of just pictures that we've gotten. Okay. Right. So. And so the, they're using this as part of their manufacturing process. Yeah, like outgoing inspection. So let's say you get you have this folder, it auto finds a new picture. This one doesn't, so this one I have to load a picture. Okay. So these are already labeled, like you know what they are. Okay. So you can kind of verify yep. it. Mm -hmm. So let's say so you know we go, to, yeah. we go to that one, and then here you see it takes about 0. 0.31 seconds to. <laughs> but this is a you know. And so what was this failure? So you can actually click here and it shows the original one. Yeah. So just a piece of solder that fell. Oh. They resolder something. Got it, it. It could cause a short. It can cause. Yeah. So if I go to a different one, that one had. Uh, missing screws. Three missing screws. Awesome. Well, this yeah, is super so cool. Well, we well thank here. you. Yeah, no thanks no for showing me. Cool. Yeah. Want to go count some parts? Yeah, let's go count some parts and let's look at some counterfeit parts. So, as you know, a lot of this, a lot of military aerospace applications um, stay in the market for, you know, a, an aircraft stay, you know, it stays in operation for 20, 25, sometimes 30 years. Sure. Right? The big challenge that these companies have, you know, they make an airplane in the 80s is to be able to buy parts from the 80s, because as you know, they become obsolete really fast. Sure. And what happens is it becomes a nightmare to keep the, the equipment going after all the parts become obsolete. That gives a huge open field for criminals to come up with counterfeit parts. Right. So we have one example here. I, I like to call them creative entrepreneurs. I call them criminals. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a uh, this is a, a, a very interesting um, component. This is a Samsung SD RAM part. Uh, it's uh, ninety dollars per component. Uh -huh. So a reel of these parts, right, comes with a thousand components. So that's ninety thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So with ninety thousand dollars for a reel of components, that gives you the incentive for the creative entrepreneurs, right? right? Well, and, and not only that, you don't have to you don't have to counterfeit each one. You don't. You can counterfeit just a few yep. and make your margin just on that. And they can be mostly real. Yeah, exactly. With a few extra ones and now you've made, you know, at least a few hundred extra bucks. Exactly. Just even replacing yeah. a couple. Yeah. What the counterfeiters love to do is to remove uh, components, right, from a board like this one. They remove the components uh, with a hot air, uh, air gun. Yep. They remove it, mm -hmm. they clean the pads, and then they remark with the part that you're looking for. So it's a phenomenally lucrative enterprise. Yeah. Uh, you want to take a look what yeah. this looks like? Yeah, because I've, so just to be clear, I've seen some folks that do this sort of thing yeah. in person. I would imagine. Uh, so you, you see people in, in the markets pulling uh, chips off boards. And to be really clear, like that's not the majority of what they do. The more legit folks will take parts off boards and then just re-reel them. Right. Yeah. And so then, you know, or put them in trays or whatever yeah. the, the standard packaging is, because sometimes these parts are actually out of, you know, no longer being manufactured yeah. and are valuable. Yeah. Counterfeiting is misrepresentation, right? Yes. Right. If you pull something out of a board and you sell to me and you tell me you pull out of a yeah. board, hey, this is a used fine. chip. I re-reeled it. It's perfectly fine. Yep. Yeah. My and you might be thankful because Absolutely. that might be the only place you can might get that chip. Place. Right? right? You may not yeah. be able to buy a new one anymore. Absolutely. Yeah. No, you came to us with the challenge, right? Yeah. To find which one was the bad S9. Right. No. Well, not me, bad. Not bad. Which not one bad. was refurbished? I didn't say which one was good or bad. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so can you tell which one is the fake component? There's yeah, some good none parts of them are mixed real. with some uh, some bad parts. So I'm gonna guess just based on the chip markings that this one is different from the rest. Um. But I don't see any other differences. Yeah, let's go check it out. And so you just put this flat on the table in the exercise. Just put front of the table yeah. for this uh, quick analysis. Oh, that's so cool! Yeah. So oh, me, look at that! I can't wait till this. Bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you can see the wire bonds, and you can see yeah. the legs, and this uh, metal base where the uh, silicone 
little die is based on it's called a lead frame. So and that's actually the chip itself. That's, right? that's where chip. all the logic is. All the logic, yeah. And you've seen uh, images of wafers and people with those bunny suits right. and the wafers. So from that wafer, uh, those uh, dies are diced. So they are just cut in yep. little tiny pieces. With like a pizza wheel. Pizza wheel, exactly. Yep. And each one of those little tiny pieces is a fully functional uh, processor, memory, whatever you have, yep. right? So, and then that little piece of silicone is connected. So those little wires, the wire bonds, are connect a little piece of silicone to a lead frame that then brings that signal to the external world. So the pad from the outside you see is here, and that epoxy you were talking about earlier is this darker uh, area. And That's so these are the legs that you see on the chip. Exactly. Right? Um, That's that what solder to. is going to be applied to connect this to a board. Right. And um, as you can see here, uh, they're clearly different, right? So <laughs> they look the same, the same, and then it's... And the biggest different. difference is that the, the, the die size, the actual piece of silicon, Correct. is a different size. Different size. And so then everything else changes around that, the lead frame and everything else Correct. changes to, to, adopt, to, to, to um, accommodate for that. Exactly. Now, does this sort of lead to counterfeiters getting more sophisticated and trying to find chips that have the same lead frame and the same die size? So we've been doing this for almost 10 years now, right? Yeah. And we've seen it's an evolution on the sophistication. Yeah, um, it's a little bit like an arms race. Exactly, right? it's an arms race. Yeah. 10 years ago, we could catch a lot of counterfeit just in visual inspection. Yeah. You know, in look at the uh, misspellings, like you were talking about, yeah. wrong dates. Yeah. And you can just look, it's like, this is, they're getting better. Right, yeah. and they get more sophisticated, and we're catching fewer things now with the visual inspection, which you have to do anyway. There's the first line of defense. Yeah, but we're getting more and more on the X-ray. Yeah. Um, not only uh, discrepancies between components, we also look at, for example, uh, by just looking at this specific component, you can go to the documentation on this yeah. chip, right? right? And you say, oh, uh, this pin here is supposed to be uh, power to the yep. component. And you look at the x-ray, you see that that pin connects to the bottom of the die, which is a ground, so right. it can't be a power, right? Got it. So you start doing some detective work, and you can find quite a bit of things. Got it. Okay. And, and then you start to get narrow down the, narrow down. the, the criteria for what other chip, as, as a counterfeiter, exactly. that you could use as a stand-in, and you, you get to the point where you, there just isn't much else. Exactly. Like, then it's the economic work. threshold, yeah. right, where it doesn't, it's not worth anymore. Yeah, I think this is one of the things that, particularly when it comes to Shenzhen and the electronics markets, you know, it's definitely common knowledge that this happens, but it's still, it's not the rule, it's still the exception. Yeah. Uh, and I so, agree. but it becomes so hard to detect with visual inspection and things like that because there's been this arms race that yeah. it's, it's really cool to see some tools that you can use that are, you know, at least if you have the machine, are reasonably cost-effective to yeah. use in an actual production environment. Exactly. And if you are in the US, you, could, you know, there's a risk of the FBI knocking on your door and you spend a few years in jail. Because okay. it has happened. And it happens often where... Really? So you oh, have yeah. guys that are doing this inside the US. So this is not just... just so we, there is... Overseas. There are overseas operations, but you, if there is someone in the US, right, yeah. uh, commercializing those parts, yeah. then... Yes, yeah, they, they do go to jail. Well, this is awesome. Thank you for sharing this. Yeah, this, absolutely. this like closes a lot of loops for me because I've seen some parts of this ecosystem, but yeah. I hadn't seen I hadn't seen this part. Bill, thank you so much. This has been an amazing Anytime. way to spend a, to spend a day. <laughs> this is yeah. You guys have such fun toys, and uh, yeah, this has been such a, a, an awesome look into into your your corner of the industry. I appreciate so, it. Thank you. Hi there, and welcome to the end of the video. Uh, I'm actually now in Las Vegas. I'm here for the DEF CON conference. Uh, this is one of the larger security conferences in the US. Uh, some might call it a hacker conference. And I have a bunch of things that I'd like to share with you that have all come back up in the last minute here. I'm recording this uh, just like two days before this video will go live. The first is you've been dying to know how much did it cost for all the parts to build this S9 Plus? Uh, and I have an answer for that. But first I, I was curious what, what you would guess. So I put up a community post uh, a few days ago and asked you to guess the price for all of the parts in US dollars. And it, it was actually really interesting because as reference, I wanted to give you the, the price that it cost for me to buy the same model, same phone, new and in a box at Best Buy in the US was $592.61. And 
Here are your guesses. It's super interesting. Like, so, so the phone costs new around $600 and the majority of your guesses are clustered in a nice normal distribution in the middle of that range. Uh, obviously there's some crazy guesses uh, way off the, the top end. You know, people guessed like $9 billion. Uh, it didn't cost that much. It turns out if we average all your answers together, it's pretty darn close. I haven't actually done that yet. Let me do that. A ton of people responded. I got uh, over 6,000 comments when I checked. Um, which is actually really hard to, to deal with. Um, uh, it took me quite a while to like figure out how to pull them into a spreadsheet. Um, I spent way too long last night. So this is actually super interesting. The average is $280, and what I actually spent is $284.93. Uh, that is the power of the crowds right there. Collectively, you're very educated on the price of phones and very good at estimating this. I said I would I would give a shout out to the three closest guesses, and I didn't expect that there would be an 11-way tie. Uh, 11 people guessed $285, which is within seven cents of the correct answer. As promised, I wanted to give a shout out to Anonymous, Juan, Hosea, Totvidius, Fazora, Jacob, Brandon, Jvolution, Muhammad, Bicky, an angel. <laughs> you all are great uh, phone part price estimators. Congratulations. Everyone asks me, you know, what did it cost? What did it cost? What did it cost? And I made a video about what it cost me to make my own iPhone a couple of years ago. And, and I discussed a lot in there why I'm not super, super focused on price and uh, why I didn't include the price in that video. And, and I did think to include it in this video and it just didn't make the edit. So I'm sorry if that, if that really bummed you out. Um, if you wanna know more about my thoughts on price and should you, I think a lot of people are asking like, should I build my own phone or should I buy a phone? Uh, my best answer is like, if you just want a phone as cheaply as possible, go buy a used phone. You can test it, it's fully working. You're not gonna break anything. Um, if you, if you really excited about learning more about phones and learning how to repair phones and learning how to take them apart and what's inside, then yeah, by all means, try and build your own phone. It's a little bit hard to get parts elsewhere in the world other than the cell phone markets in China. Um, that's a particularly good spot to find these parts, but it is possible. I've, I've talked with a number, a number of people that have, have mail ordered, uh, all the parts they need to build both iPhones and, and Androids. Uh, what I will say is you should be prepared to spend more than I did. I have a fair amount of experience now. I have access to a lot of parts when I'm in the markets in China. And um, it's very possible that you'll break something and have to buy a new screen or a new logic board. If you break one of those, it might significantly increase the cost of the phone for you. And if that's gonna make you really sad, then I'm probably best to build, buy a phone that's already working that you can test. A used phone should be about the same price. Uh, I was looking on eBay and I was finding prices in the same ballpark within 20 or 30 bucks of of what it cost me to, to build my phone. So I wouldn't recommend this. If, if you're just trying to save money, this is, not, this is not the right way to do that. If you're curious and a geek like me and you wanna try this out and you wanna learn more, by all means, I, I, yes, definitely do it. If you'd like to see a full list of all of the parts and a, and a price breakdown for each one, make sure you follow me on Twitter or Facebook. I'm gonna post that there shortly. Uh, and that kind of leads me into my next point, which is I don't plug it enough, but <laughs> uh, I, I am, reasonably active on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And I'm trying to invest more in putting up cool stuff that doesn't make it into the videos. There's just a lot of like behind the scenes and deleted scenes and, and cool stuff that just don't fit the video for whatever reason. And I really would like to share that with you guys. Um, there's a deleted scene actually from this video that will be going up um, next week, uh, which is Bill showing us their vintage x-ray machines from shoe stores. Uh, it was one of the first retail uses of x-ray machines. It's super cool. Also, I captured the immediate aftermath of a lithium ion battery fire in the cell phone markets in China. Um, it's super crazy. So make sure you're following me for those. Uh, I'll, I'll post those in the next week or two here. Two more quick bits of news. First, I'm here at DEF CON all weekend. I'm here till Monday. If you see me, come say hi. I have stickers, I have metal business cards, I have headphone jack PCBs, um, and yeah, I would love to meet you. Uh, we'll probably do a some sort of informal meetup or something either on Saturday, today. It'll be the video that goes live. It'll be Saturday when this video goes live. I'm recording this on Thursday, but it'll be Saturday, August 10th, 
or tomorrow, Sunday, August 11th. I haven't figured out exactly where or when yet, but maybe like in the hardware hacking area. So check Twitter. Secondly, I have been working extremely hard over the past couple weeks on a very big build of something new with a friend in San Francisco that was supposed to come with me to DEF CON. We were gonna do a big unveiling here and then release the video shortly after about how we made it and what it is. Unfortunately, we hit a last minute snag yesterday and it, it just wasn't ready to come. So that means we need to do an unveiling somewhere else. And we're gonna do that in San Francisco. I think we're gonna hold some sort of party. Uh, so if you're in San Francisco, make sure again, you're following Twitter. Uh, I'll post inf info about that there. You'll get to see this thing before anybody else, before the video about it comes out. And if you want, you might even get to be one of the people that tries it on camera and be part of the video. And I think that's about it. I'm Scotty from Strange Parts, and I'm gonna head downstairs and go check out DEF CON. You should hit that subscribe button down below and let the YouTube algorithm know you wanna see more of my videos. I'll see you again soon.